Hey guys, thank you for coming. This is the Odetic School of Mysteries. My name is Bear. I think this is, um, what is this, episode 22? I think it's 22. Yeah, I think 21 was the Lucifer one. That was not my favorite video to do. <laughs> I didn't like that one much. But this one is going to be much more, uh, much more my style, I guess you could say. I got all set up. I'm sitting in my comfy chair. And, um... Looking forward to having a little bit of a visit. All right. So the today is about, of course, is about meditation. You probably probably read the you know little title of it. The thing that's really interesting about meditation is, well, how, how do I put this? Meditation. So in, in law school, like if you're a lawyer, there's a thing, I can't remember the, the fancy term for it, but there's a, a phrase that says something proves too much. It's, like, it's an argument that proves too much. And meditation is one of those things. Where if you're from India, for example, they have about like 10,000 different words for the different kinds of meditation that you can do. In America, because America sucks, we only have one word that encompasses everything. It proves too much. There's too much stuff that falls under the umbrella of meditation. And we don't have good words to compensate for it. You know, um, excuse me. And so um, we, we get... Uh, we get stuck and so people they they get in their minds that they can't meditate or that there's something wrong with them that their brains just spin too fast without realizing that there's multiple kinds of medica meditation excuse me i apologize without realizing that there's multiple different kinds of medication <laughs> you try to say medication meditation and um not all meditation is created equal. And so we're going to go through some of these today. All right. Um, one of these, um, I'll point it out to you when we get there. I'm going to do a whole, we're going to cover it briefly. But then um, in uh, a few videos, I'm going to cover it in a, a very in-depth um, in very in-depth way. It's going to be about Odinism and the um, the shamanic portion of the Odinic School of Mysteries, and that that is definitely part of one of the meditation things. But just a heads up, uh, we'll go over it very briefly in this one. But this particular kind of medi medication, this particular um, meditation, we'll go over much more detail later on. Okay. So before we begin, I'm going to, um, there's some things to keep in mind. Um, the meditation is mind work, essentially. When we talk about med meditation, <laughs> we're talking about mind work. We're functioning and we're working on the mind. So the first thing that happens during meditation is you put the body to sleep, essentially. The mind is still awake, but the body is asleep. It's a little bit like a daydream that you control. So what typically what you typically do when you meditate, um, especially at the beginning, is you get into a very comfortable position like I am now. Um, sometimes I do it laying down. Sometimes I just lay in the tub. Uh, oftentimes, sometimes they even put water in the tub. It just, you, you just find a place that's comfortable. You lay down and you work on relaxing. And a big part of the relaxation technique is breathing. Really deep breaths. And the reason you're doing that is you, there, there's a, there are a few different reasons for that. The, the first one is to get your, your body heavily oxygenated. And the more oxygen you have in your body, the calmer you'll get. It, it just brings all that stress way down. 
what happened, well, a lot of people don't realize a lot of the symptoms of fear that they get, um, butterflies in the stomach, nausea, anxiety, all of those things, they occur because you forget to breathe. You get anxious. And so you, you take these little breaths. And what that does is it builds up carbon dioxide carbon dioxide in your bloodstream and you're without you even realizing it you're suffocating your, your brain isn't getting enough oxygen so just bringing in really deep breaths into your body will automatically just by the pure chemistry of it bring your anxiety and all that stuff just way down and so the first thing you do, it's like a, I call it a mini game. You know, if you're playing a game like Mario Kart or something, um, I don't know, I haven't played Mario Kart. We'll say like a, like a, um, like Grand Theft Auto or whatever. You're playing a game and then somewhere along the way, there's a little mini game inside the game. The, this exercise is a little bit like that. So in, um, in meditation, the mini game is, the relaxation. So what we do at the beginning, we take deep breaths in and out. And the way it works is like this. You take a deep breath in, you just picture all that oxygen coming into your body and you're blowing out the tension. That's essentially all you're doing. You're focusing on the breath. Tension goes out. And the game is to see how much more tension you can get out of your body with each breath. <sighs> you know, and sometimes if your body is used to being tense, you'll start to ratchet back up again and you have to remind it, no, relax. It take, this takes, this is a skill. I, you, can, you don't know this right off. This is a skill. It's not something that you just do. It's, it's a skill, it takes time and practice. And the more time and practice you, you do, you, time and practice you do, the more time and attention you put into it, the better and better your body is at relaxation. And so the calmer you get, the, you know, the heavy, you just let yourself just kind of melt into your position, melt into your chair or your tub or your bed or wherever it is you're doing it. You just sink, you just feel yourself just going to go way, way, way down. Okay. So, it's worthwhile to, to spend as much time as you need to get there. People get impatient and they, they want to um, just rush the process. And with time, your body gets good at it and it doesn't take as long. But when you're at the beginning stages, it's important to just relax, calm down, bring it down, relax into it and just, you know, just really get comfortable. <clears throat> and just really enjoy the process of relaxation. And so your nervous system, you're not dying, of course, but so you so when I say your nervous system starts to shut down, I'm not saying you're like gonna die, but I am saying your your systems will begin to kind of just disappear. It's a little bit like um like wearing a shirt, and what do I mean by that? So when you first put your shirt on, right, you feel the shirt on your body. Right? You could tell it's there. You could feel it moving across your skin. But at some point, your body realizes that the shirt isn't important, and so you stop feeling it anymore. The, the feeling of the shirt just goes away. And that's kind of what happens to your body, where you spend enough time focusing on your breath, getting enough oxygen in there, your, your body will start to just kind of just check out. And now... At the beginning, it's really easy to fall asleep, and that's fine. If you accidentally fall asleep, you know, don't sweat it. It's just part of the process. 
Okay. So don't worry too much about that. The, the thing to um, be careful of is you just, you, your mind needs to stay awake <laughs> is the thing because we're working on the mind. But so at the beginning, because um, if you're not used to doing a lot of mind work, your mind and body are going to want to, they're pretty used to being in sync. And so the mind will want to go to sleep too. And so the trick at the beginning is to keep the mind up and let the body go down, down below. And so the body kind of falls asleep, but your mind is alert and, and ready to go. So that's how you kind of get into meditation. And um, there's a lot of videos online about that. If you want an in-depth meditation tutorial we could definitely do that leave some comments down below and tell me that you you really want me to go into like a full-on in-depth meditation how to get there video um but i but first things first i needed to teach you how to get there at least in a quick snippet way um so we could get into some of this other stuff All right. So there's about five major kinds of meditation. Um, at least there's five we're going to cover today. There are, in fact, quite a bit more out there in the universe. Uh, we we're probably won't cover those today. And what we um, don't cover, maybe I'll cover in some other video down the road but for all intents and purposes for right now we're going to talk about five basic kinds of meditation and people don't realize that there are so many different kinds of meditation and so people think they can't do it so the um the the myth about meditation is that you're trying not to think that's impossible you cannot not think right? If you stop thinking, you die, <laughs> right? Um, you're not trying to stop your mind. It's like, it's like a running river. It's a flowing river. You, if you try and push against the river, you're going to fail, right? You want to harness the river and teach it to go where you need it to go. So my dad, for example, I love my father and his whole life, he's always said, I don't, I can't meditate. I have ADD, I can't do it. It's just too hard. My mind rushes too much. But what he'll, but ever since I was a little boy, he'll sit down with a cup of tea. Um, some, if it's Christmas time, maybe it was a rum and some hot chocolate. And he'll put on music just before bed, like an hour or so before he goes to sleep. And he'll sit in his rocking chair and close his eyes and listen to music. And he'll just kind of rock in his rocking chair, listen to music, and we'll just daydream. Uh, he doesn't know or didn't know that this whole time that was a meditation. It's called free flow meditation or sometimes it's called daydream meditation. And the goal of it really is just, um, it's uh, very, the goal of it is just to kind of give your brain a break. So the way it works is that you don't focus on any particular thought. This way it's called free flow. You relax, you go all the way down to a meditative state and you let thoughts come and let thoughts go. They just kind of just, kind of like dreaming, but not quite. It's very similar to dreaming. You, thoughts come and thoughts go, and you just kind of, you just, you, you just listen to the music or whatever it is you're doing, and you just focus on your breath. You just let thoughts come and let thoughts go. That's called free flow meditation. And for almost everyone in the mystery schools, we prescribe that for at least half an hour a day. Uh, we have a, um, 
There's an initiate. And we've been... He was talking about having how, how hard it was to wind down at night. And he's constantly stressed and stuff. And I was like, dude, you got to do your meditation. Go do your, med your meditation every day. And then when he started doing it consistently, his stress level just like... Phew, just went down. Just prescribed, quiet, free flow meditation is a really great way to just chill the hell out. <laughs> you know, it gives your brain a break. You're not focusing on anything. If thoughts come, thoughts go. Your body kind of shuts down and you relax into it. So congratulations, Dad, if, you, if you're watching. Uh, you've been meditating for years and you just didn't know it. Um, so you see what I mean? See people, that's not something someone would think of when you, when you see like the Buddhist monk standing on his head, that's not what you think of when you think of meditation, is it? Um, it, it's, it's something different. So the next one is, uh, it's called problem solving meditation. Now, and I, and I know in like India, they have all these fancy words for it. I don't know the fancy words, but for, for now, we're just going to call them as they are. Problem solving meditation. Same kind of thing. You come down, you are in a deep meditative state, your body's kind of shut down and your mind is active. You start working on problems. Now, what's interesting about this, you could do this while walking. Walking is fantastic for this. Meditation does not necessarily mean sitting down and being quiet. I know. Trips people <laughs> trips people out when you tell them that. It doesn't necessarily mean sitting down and being quiet. It means, a lot of times it just means giving your body something to do. I'm back. My wife came in. So, um, where was I? Um, so yeah, it's, it's giving your body, either you're shutting your body down so that there isn't anything going on or you give it something to do so your mind can be active. So, uh, that's why walking, uh, like, um, I don't know. There's like a list of like a dozen multi-billionaires who use walking on a regular basis for this, this thing. So problem solving meditation is either you go for a walk uh, or some sort of repetitive task like mantras, ducking wood, gardening. This is why people like gardening. They don't realize this is why they like gardening, but it's a kind of meditation. It shuts your body down, gives it something to do. And so your mind can work. My dad, my dad again, uh, said this one of the most therapeutic thing he's ever done. He likes pulling weeds. He goes up. Growing up, he'd go outside and he'd just pull weeds all day. Um, but the, what problem solving meditation does is instead of letting thoughts go, come and go, just free flow, you, you you're focusing on a problem and how to fix it. So you're kind of, you're, you're turning things over in your head. You're looking at it in all kinds of different directions. And you're just like, okay, well, what if I do it like this? You ever, so like if you, uh, you ever do like a project, like you're um, building something in a shop or, you know, you're reorganizing the house and you just sit there and you, you just stare, you just go. Hmm. You just stare at it. You just stare at it, you stare at it, and you stare at it. And you look like you're going crazy. And people come in and they, they're looking at you, what's going on? But in your head, you're like, you're moving the couch around, you're putting things in different places. So you, you're picturing all that in your head. You know, that's actually, again, that, that's a meditation. You're just not realizing that's what you're doing. Meditation is more getting into that state on purpose instead of just falling into it by accident. So uh, oftentimes when I'm trying to solve riddles or when I was given, like you, even now, you're still given keys and they're, they're pain 
okay, keys are a pain. They're, um, they're these little riddles that force your brain to work and you have to try and solve them. And so what ends up happening is you're sit I'm sitting here and it's like, okay, what does this key mean? You flip it over on this side, you flip it over on that side, and you flip it over on the other side, and you're looking at it, and you're looking at it, and you're looking at it, and you're trying to tease all, apart all the different pieces so that you can, um, so that it all makes sense, right? Um, that's what problem solving medita meditation is. That's kind of part of that process. Um, so, um, did I just lose my piece of paper? I just, I totally just lost my piece of paper. Um. Damn it. <laughs> well, <laughs> some videos are like that. Oh my gosh, it's like all day, all day, life has conspired against me to make this video. <laughs> Normally I do this during the day, but my wife had doctor's appointments and I had to hold the baby and then I got stuck out in traffic all day and then it was just it's just one thing after another. But I am stubborn and I've got to do this video no matter what. Even though I get interrupted in the middle of it, even though I drop my notes, it's just can't stop me life. <laughs> Oh my gosh. So, um, the next kind of meditation is one that we've actually talked about briefly in a different video. In the strengthening the mind uh, um, video. It's called the, the focus meditation. It's called focus building medita meditation. And there's a couple of different kinds of these. Um... But mostly what it involves is like what we talked about before. And that is focusing on the breath and keeping your mind spot on. So instead of closing your eyes and letting and, you know, trying to problem solve or instead of closing your eyes, letting thoughts come and go, you you pull your focus, it's about pulling your focus into something very precise and holding it there. Now, um, and there's different ways of doing this. One of the very common ways is to try and snuff a candle out with your mind. I'm gonna tell you, I haven't been able to do this yet. <laughs> uh, the masters can, um, but I haven't been able to, but so it's like you light a candle and you have your candle and it's flickering. And one of the ways you train your mind to stick with something is to light the candle and sit there and you stare at it. And you stare at the candle and try and get it to go out. Sounds crazy. It, it can be done. Um, I know how it sounds, but basically, like, like all things, it's it's less um, things that are given to you in the mystery schools are not necessarily about achieving the end result, and that's first. It takes a while for students to figure that out. Um, you know, the the tendency is is like you give someone a project, you're like, I'm going to crush it. I'm going to destroy this project. You were so proud of me. I, you know, you know, colored the page. You asked me to color and it's not about winning. You're not winning. The goal of the exercise is not to actually snuff out the candle, though. Ultimately that's where you get to the, the goal of the exercise is to train your mind to just stay in just a very you know just it's like sharpening a knife you just bring your mind into focus into something that is just right there right you're just right down to that like atomic level of focus 
And so you you do that long enough that your your mind like just cut like a knife. You 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 focus on anything for hours at a time without your mind wandering or wavering because you've trained it specifically to stay focused. And that's the that's the important part. And that's um, that's what the purpose of that particular what that particular um, meditation is for. And so uh, the, these kinds of meditations are, are used to help other kinds of meditations. So if you're like really good at the focus meditation, it's going to help you a lot for things like the problem solving meditation. When you're sitting there and you're just turning ideas over in your mind over and over and over again. And you're not going to be trying to focus on this problem you're trying to solve and then have your mind turn around and want to think of Looney Tunes or something. Um, no, it keeps things tight. It keeps things focused. And that, that's really what we're looking for. All right. Um, let's see. So... Um, I'm gonna, we're going to do one more, and then we're going to get into journey. So the next one, relaxation. It's very similar. Um, really, actually, now that I think about it, we already covered this at the beginning. And that's the mini game. That That's the just relaxation. <laughs> it's focusing on the breath. Ex exhaling all the all that all that energy exhaling all that tension and just you're working from like even you start with your toes and into your feet and into your ankles and your calves your your um, ankles and you just work in your thighs you just very slowly work your way through your whole body bring as far down as possible and uh, this is done for a lot of reasons. Either you're trying to get into meditation, or you're trying to help yourself go to sleep, or all kinds of stuff. Um, and I didn't realize, I realized just now that we already kind of covered that, so I'm just going to skip it. Or I should say, I'm just going to move on, because we don't want to keep kicking a dead horse. Um, so journey and remote viewing. This is something uh, that we're going to go into great amounts of detail in an upcoming video. The shamanic journey is where you go into an altered state of consciousness, which is what we're talking about here. This whole thing that we're talking about, this whole video is about obtaining an altered state of consciousness. But you're obtaining an altered state of consciousness without drugs i'm a huge advocate for being able to do this without the use of drugs and it's not because i'm against drugs right i'm um like the occasional use of ayahuasca or any you know, of that kind of stuff is fine by me I, I really don't care but it's a bit like having sex on ecstasy once you have sex on ecstasy, you can't do it any other way. So you need to strengthen. It's like, how do you put it? So it's like if you're always using drugs to get to an altered state, it's a little bit like always driving everywhere and never walking, right? You never build up your mind. The drug just carries you along. And so what has to happen first in my opinion, is that you need to focus on building the strength first in order to get where you're going. And after you're strong, that after you're strong, then maybe we could talk about um, getting there other ways. But everything we're talking about here can be achieved through work and effort and practice. All right, that's it's really important. 
it's really important that we take the time to do the work and do the practice. Excuse me. Okay. So the way the shamanic journey works, we do all the steps we did before. Focus on the breathing, bring yourself way down, you sink into your chair, you'll kind of get to the point, there'll be a certain point when you do this long enough and you get relaxed enough, you have enough oxygen pumping through your body that your, your body is nice and oxygenated. And then you'll kind of, there's like a weird sensation that happens where you kind of feel as though you're not really on your bed anymore or your chair. You kind of, you kind of hit this, um, it's hard to explain it until you're there, but you, you kind of, you leave <laughs> this world and now you're kind of in the mind space. You feel like you're floating. So there's two paths you could take from here. Either you could then shut your brain down, your mind down and go to sleep, or you leave the mind open or on and you could journey. At that point, you could train your mind to actually leave your body. And this is where, how you get remote viewing to happen. This is how, this is the shamanic journey when, where shamans leave their bodies and go into the spirit world. The, the spirit world is mind. All things are mind. Everything is ultimately mind. So shutting your brain, brain down, shutting your, your body down and going into the world of the mind or in a lot of shamanic practices, it's called dream time. Shutting that down and going into the mind world is like going to the spirit world. They're both the same thing. The world of the mind and the world of spirit is exactly the same plane. And that is the, the, the fifth kind, fifth major kind of meditation. Through this kind of meditation, you can meet help, you can meet helping spirits, you can talk to gods, you can travel the world, you can go see things. Um, if you've ever been led through a past life regression, without you explicitly, without you really knowing it, this is the kind of meditation you're going on. You're not in your body anymore, you are... You're beyond space time. You could go into past. You could go into the past. You could go into the future. You could go into the present. You could go look for lost objects. There's the things you can do with your mind are actually fairly incredible. Um, it's uh, but then again, we're going to go into this in heavy amounts of detail in an upcoming video. Um, shamanism is a major part of the Odin School of Mysteries. Odin himself was the proto-shaman. The Many of his stories in his imagery are very classic shamanic um, imagery. The, the myths of him riding his horse up and down the world tree, going through all the different planes and back up. Classic shamanic Im imagery. Um... Achieving altered states, you know, the, the whole ritual of hanging on the world tree is through pain, through suffering, is a very, very common practice in a lot of cultures to achieving altered states. The, um, oh my gosh, I'm going to, they're going to kick my ass if I forget what it's called. I think it's called the Sundance Vision Quest, maybe, I think it's maybe Vision Quest. Uh, where, the, where a lot of the Native American tribes will hook, will hang themselves from hooks. And, and, uh, and through that severe pain, they, they hallucinate and then they go into the other world. So uh, on its own level, the story of Odin hanging on the world tree is a very common shamanic practice. I'm not suggesting you go and do that. <laughs> okay. Symbols mean different things. They're they're multi-layered. They're multi-dimensional. So a lot of things happen all at once. Um, you don't need to suffer like that in order to get there, but people do. Okay. 
So um, that's some something to look forward to is the whole shamanic journey, shamanism in general. And um, I really look forward to doing that because that's a really, excuse me, I apologize. Um, I really look forward to talking about that. Uh, that's how I entered the the mysteries to begin with was through shamanism. Um, that's how one of the reasons I've really related to Odin to begin with was through shamanism and just the whole, the meditation, altered state, excuse me, and, um, ritual practice that shamanism gives you is a fantastic way to bring you to a much more complete spiritual existence. Because in a lot of ways, it forces you to, um, it forces equilibrium in your mind. Which is why, which is actually a point that is worth bearing, bearing in mind. Which is why in the mystery schools, we always push, in every mystery school ever under the universe, pushes um, meditation. If it's a mystery school worthy of the name. They... Meditation forces balance in your mind. It forces balance. If you are not in equilibrium, you cannot meditate. All right. If you're not in equilibrium, you cannot meditate. But you could practice. And you could get there. And once you get there, you got it. It's like, it's like riding a bike. Once you know the steps, you can get into a meditative state. You can do it anytime. You could do it while walking down the road. You could do it while, technically you could do it while driving in your car. I don't recommend it. <laughs> you know, I just want to put that out there. Don't meditate while driving. Um, it'll save your life. But, excuse me, I'm doing it at night. I'm talking about meditation in my comfy chair and my brain thinks it's going to sleep. So, um, So yeah, those are the five different kinds of meditation. There are definitely more out there. Um, maybe in some other video we'll cover them. But for now, these are the, the major ones. Most of the time, people don't realize that they're meditating when they are meditating. The thing with meditation is, with, with time and practice, you could get there intentionally instead of just stumbling into it blindly. And if you do it, if you do it intentionally, your brain begins to develop, begins to strengthen, and then eventually you see some tremendous benefits from it. As a prescription, I typically, well, I make all initiates, all Odin school initiates meditate. It's a requirement. Um, minimum 15 minutes. What is typically demanded of the initiate is 30 minutes of solid free flow meditation every day. You pick when people meditate better at different times of day, depending on who you are. I meditate better just before bedtime. That's where I do most of my work. Um, most of my free flow meditation go is just before bedtime. <sighs> I'm talking about bed now. <laughs> no, I'm, no, I'm getting all sleepy. Um, so what I do is I, an hour before bedtime, phone goes off, no more screen time whatsoever. This is really important. Screen time, like your like tablet, your computer, whatever, as a flicker rate. So you, you get a double dose, a double whammy. You have the blue light, which tricks your brain to thinking it's sunlight. And it, the flicker rate is like, a, is like a high frequency strobe light and it tortures your brain. And I mean that in a very real way, it tortures your brain. So if you are watching your TV or something just before bed, um, it messes with your brain chemistry. It like fries it. So, an hour before bedtime, no screens. So I turn the screens off, 
I, I just, I do about 10 or 15 minutes with the chores just to kind of get all the cobwebs out. And then what I do is I go into my bathroom, turn off all the lights in the house, turn off all the lights in the bathroom, close the door, and go sit in my tub in the pitch blackness. Sometimes I run water, not always. If I run water, it's going to be room temperature. And it creates kind of a, um, what is it called? Um, when you take away all the uh, sensations. Um, sensory deprivation chamber. Basically, that's kind of what I'm doing. Is I'm kind of creating a quasi-sensory deprivation chamber. I go in there, I lay down, and I just I start a free flow meditation. I work really hard on calming everything down. <sighs> breathing, just bringing all that energy down, all my mind functions down, all my body functions down, and then just start a free flow meditation. And let thoughts come, and I let thoughts go. Um, you'll be, it's quite surprising how many insights you come from that. It doesn't seem like you get it, you'll, you'd get anything from that, but there is a tremendous amount of stuff you get from that. I have often had visions by doing that. I'll be sitting there and then I'll have a vision of something um, that pops into my head that was probably sitting there waiting waiting in the wings to show me this whole time, but because I'm too busy and I'm wrestling the kids, you know, and stuck in traffic and all that stuff, you don't ever get to see it. But when you when you go through the proper channels, then it, um, it gets to kind of come out. That's my nighttime routine. I'm in there for about 30 minutes. And then after my 30 minutes is up, um, I take a really cold shower, as cold as I can get it. Then I go into my bedroom and relax and then go to sleep. So, um, again, if you want a, if you're interested in having like a guided meditation or just a, a more in-depth go through about the process of getting into a meditative state, Leave comments down below and I'll definitely do that. Um, I'm all about meditation. It's really important. And uh, it's important to break some of these myths too. People think they can't meditate or, or they have wrong ideas about what a meditation is. And um, it's important to break those. All right. Well, this is a lot of fun. Um, I'm sorry for the interruptions. And... Well, we'll do this again. I like doing this in my chair. It's really comfortable. It's much more comfortable than being in my desk. Okay. Well, um, I guess good night. All right. Have a good night. Bye-bye.